Today I'm going to do an experiment about blood. And it's an experiment that's really very famous, but I've never done it before. It was made famous by a chemist at the beginning of the 20th century. I think it was the French chemist Wasson who discovered fluorine and also nearly poisoned himself with mercuric chloride during a lecture. But before we start, I need a bit of protective clothing, which I'm going to put on here. Now the lab coat. Let's get started. I'm going to use iron nitrate. We're now going to put some water. The mauve crystals have gone brown when we add water. Now the story is that Wasson, this chemist, had a technician who was armed with a knife. Nowadays I've got a plastic knife, but I think it was a metal knife. And what happened was the technician covered his knife with a solution of the iron nitrate and then ran into the lab or the lecture theatre screaming and sta appeared to stab Moisson on the arm, like so. And his arm went blood red, and the audience screamed, and they thought he was going to die. But what actually had happened was, like me, Moisson had painted his sleeve with a chemical called thiocyanate that reacts with iron to make it go very red. I can show you this by pouring a little thiocyanate into there. You can see it really goes blood red. It was completely staged to frighten the students. Whether it was for Halloween or something else, I don't know. Nowadays, we can't afford technicians just to run in and stab professors, so the professors have to stab themselves. It's not quite so convincing, but you still get a nice blood stain. The chemistry of blood is fascinating because haemoglobin, the molecule that makes blood red, is a nanomachine. It actually works like a little machine. The molecule changes shape to carry oxygen round the blood. Let me show you how. In the middle of the haemoglobin molecule, there are four rings like this which are of nitrogen and carbon with a hole in the middle. And when haemoglobin is not reacting with oxygen or hasn't reacted, the iron atom which sits next to this ring is too big to go into the hole. So it sits sticking out just like this. But then when the iron reacts with oxygen, this is not a very good model, but you imagine this is O2, it reacts with the iron and the iron gets smaller, and it now can fit right into the middle of the ring with the oxygen attached. So the iron moves into the ring. In fact, it moves from the bottom upwards to meet the oxygen. But what is really cunning is that on the other side of the iron, it is attached to a huge protein, this huge molecule with a weight thousands of times more than this little group. And as the iron moves, it pulls the chain and the whole of this molecule moves, rather like the door of a cave in Indiana Jones video, something like that. And this whole molecule changed shape so that it reacts more easily with oxygen. And then when it is carrying the oxygen from the lungs, through the body to wherever you're exercising, when it gets to the place where you're exercising, there's carbon dioxide in the blood. So the blood is more acid. And the change in acidity makes the molecule change back in shape and expel the oxygen so that you can use it. And then it goes round again to the lungs and so on, round and round and round. When the iron binds oxygen, it changes colour, it becomes redder. And if it binds carbon monoxide, which is very poisonous, 
it goes really red, cherry red, so that people who've had carbon monoxide poisoning have very red cheeks, although sadly they're dead. But what the carbon monoxide does is it binds to the iron irreversibly. It doesn't come off again, so you can't get the oxygen going round, so your body dies. Blood itself can be quite dangerous because it can carry all sorts of different viruses and so on. So it's very difficult for a chemist like me to get hold of blood. The only thing you can do, and I've done it once, is to go to the medical centre and get the nurse to take out some of my own blood. And I tried to do an experiment for the students with my own blood. I took it to the lab, I centrifuged it, I got out the haemoglobin, and then I was going to react it with carbon monoxide. And the reaction didn't work. So, in the end, I just had to wave this bottle of blood at the students and tell them that they had to take the experiment as red.